Now that we've finished all the really hard math, let's just draw some pictures. So now, this is a technique that I typically introduce when I teach modern physics, so it might be something that you've seen before. And fundamentally, we now hopefully have a conceptual understanding of what these wave functions look like, and many things are basically going to be wells. They're either a well, broadly, broadly defined, or it's a free particle, right? It's either confined slightly, or it's completely unconfined. Unconfined particles and wave packets we'll deal with in the next chapter, but right now we can think about, broadly speaking, what's happening with wells. So, so far we've seen the infinite well, and we've seen the finite well. Now, what the book addresses is the idea that mathematically, anything beyond that's going to be really hard to do. For the harmonic oscillator, we have some special techniques that we will learn, but a lot of things might not look like that. So we can draw a picture of a potential, and we can then qualitatively predict what the wave function would look like. Why would we want to do that? Well, from the wave function, we can get then the probability distribution. And this goes back and forth. So our understanding of what should be happening in the well should match then what our wave function actually tells us. So in this case, I'm going to start by drawing a somewhat random well, and then I will talk aloud through how I would actually generate the wave functions for those wells. Now keep in mind, drawing is hard. Some people are good at it and seemingly have control over their hands. I'm one of those people that's bad at it. So frequently, what I know to be true in my mind, I can't replicate with my hand. Same situation might be true for you. So when things are real bad, maybe you erase a little bit and touch it up. You also sometimes label it and be like, hey, this should have been, you know, uh, symmetric, or this should have been consistent amplitude. I'm bad at this. That's fine. So, so let's try to draw a well. So let's draw one that is a modified infinite well. So it does go to infinity at the edges. That seems, that seems neat. So it goes to infinity at the edges, but then in the middle, there's actually a bump. So this is different than the examples in the book, I think. So let's think through what some different wave functions would look like in this well. Now again, it's a modified infinite well. So you can start by just thinking about what your infinite solutions look like. And you know that for the finite well, they look kind of similar. So let's start with E1. When we go to draw these, it's really helpful to really draw what that E0 line is. So starting here, this is going to be um, phi 1 equals 0. So what do we know about this state? Well, since the potential goes to infinity at the edges, my wave function must be 0 here. Now, does it need to be 0 here? No. No, it doesn't because it's not infinite. So the next question you should ask yourself is, how many nodes are there? So first, are there any points that you know are zero? And second, how many nodes are there? Well, this is our first energy state. So if this was in the infinite well, that's kind of just one bump. There's zero nodes. So what that means is nowhere else should it cross zero. So it's going to increase, right? Increase from the edges, but then what's going to happen when it gets here? And we can assume that these distances were supposed to be the same. I'm bad at drawing. Um, so oftentimes on tests, I might give you graph paper or something. So the probability will need to exponentially decrease in this region, right? We know from our differential equations, the work we've done so far, that when the energy of your state is above the potential, you have a sinusoidal solution and that when the energy of your state is below your potential, you have an exponential solution. So that means we have an exponentially decreasing region here, right? And so I'll kind of draw here. So what we have is sinusoidal in these two regions, and then we have an exponential in this region. So sinusoidal doesn't necessarily mean clearly like having nodes, in this case there would be zero overall nodes. So the other thing to keep in mind is it, that, that we're kind of putting two things on top of each other. So it isn't the fact that this has to like be below here, right? This is our zero line. So it's coming up, again, we're maybe, well, again, that, that's not supposed to be a straight line. Drawing's hard. We're trying to make this look kind of like a part of a, 
part of a, a sine wave, right? So, okay. So then what happens here? It needs to exponentially decrease. But remember, your function and the first derivative needs to be continuous, except where the potential is infinite. So that means it kind of comes down. And this one also would kind of come down. Now, does it cross zero? No. So the notion that it's exponentially decreasing, which I've maybe not done a great job of drawing that, it would look something like this. So you still don't have a zero point here. You have this region of exponential decrease, but remember, it does need to be continuous. And it's kind of like you're adding up one that's decreasing this way and one that's decreasing that way. So have I done a terrible job drawing this? Yes. Notice that I've labeled this as exponential. I've labeled these as sinusoidal. Um, I could also say, like, if, if this was, for instance, here, let's call this L over uh, 4, and if this was 3 fourths L and it was symmetric, we would then kind of say that this is symmetric with that, right? Again, some labeling, I've done a bad job. And maybe I drew this getting a lot smaller, I would still make sure that it doesn't cross zero. Great. So that's our ground state for this well. So now let's, let's look at the second, the second state. Now the trade-off here is the more that you label, the more messy it is, the harder it is to really draw multiple states on top of one another. So another technique would be, for instance, to like maybe just put a little label here, like A, and then off to the side, say, you know, two peaks are equal. And that takes up a lot less space than trying to actually write that there. So let me try to switch colors, see if this one will work. And now let's draw my second state. Now, you don't know exactly where the energy of that second state is compared to what this plateau here is. So let's assume that our second energy state is in fact below that plateau, just slightly. And so phi 2 equals 0. And so now we know that we need one node. And because it's symmetric, we expect that node to be in the center. So we need to have a zero crossing there. So again, we have a zero point here, we have a zero point here, but because we would have a node there, one has to come up and one goes down. So I'm gonna start this side going up and this side coming down. And it's again, okay if this crosses the line, but now it needs to come through there. Now when it hits here, it's going to be exponentially decreasing. Again, hits here, exponentially decreasing. So that's the same thing. But now it's exponentially decreasing in a way that it also actually goes through zero. And it's, it's hard to draw that well. So again, the same label of exponential in this region, uh, sinusoidal in these regions, there would be a symmetry here that I haven't drawn well. So next one, let's now pick one up here and let's call this five five. So how many nodes are there going to be? Let's plan this out first. So there's going to be four nodes. That means four zero crossings and five anti-nodes. Now, the key here now is that it is all above this. So it's all going to be sinusoidal. But at this point, we need to change what's happening in that region. So in region two, right in this region it needs to have a larger amplitude and a longer wavelength so this is where it's tricky so we know that there's four nodes it needs to not actually be evenly spaced <laughs> uh, we know that it okay it starts here and here again this is this gets really hard so i need to lay out four places and it needs to be longer here. So let's put one in each of these regions. Again, it would be nice if that was symmetric. And then two in the center. The amplitude is going to be bigger in the center. And the way that we can think through that is that in the region where your potential is higher, that means your kinetic energy is lower. That means it's traveling slower, so you actually have a greater time spent in that region. That's kind of the classical way of thinking through this. So let's start here. It goes up, down, and then 
longer wavelength, higher amplitude. This is really hard to do. And then like that. So again, I would maybe label here in this region that my amplitude is higher, my wavelength is longer because I've done a bad job drawing it. But notice, hey, I have five antinodes. So plan out your nodes and antinodes. Think about how your wavelength and your amplitude would be changing and think about your region. Sometimes you might have a smoothly varying wave function. So I hope that this helps. In the next video, I'll go through another example.